Quick Start Tutorial Axisymmetric Fluid Flow This example models fluid flow in a narrowing circular pipe section. The constriction of the pipe will accelerate the flow due to the Venturi effect. The model also shows how the PDE equations can easily be customized and modified, in this case to accommodate for the transformation to an axisymmetric coordinate system. This tutorial can be run by selecting Model Examples and Tutorials, Quick Start, Axisymmetric Fluid Flow, from the File menu, and followed with the step by step instructions in the User's Guide. To start a new model, click the New Model Toolbar button, or select New Model from the File menu. Click on the 2D Space Dimension Selection button in the New Model dialog box, and select Navier-Stokes equations from the Select Physics drop-down list. Note that the 2D equations will be manually modified in this example, instead of using the predefined axisymmetric physics mode. Change the space dimension names to R and Z, but leave the dependent variable names to their default values. Finish the physics selection and close the dialog box by clicking on the OK button. Geometry mode The geometry of the pipe cross section can be created by making two rectangles aligned with the symmetry axis, and also a circle with radius 0.5 centered at 1, 2, and finally subtracting the circle from the joined rectangles. To create a rectangle, first click on the Create Square Rectangle Toolbar button. Then left click in the main plot axis window, and hold down the mouse button. Move the mouse pointer to draw the outline of the shape, and release the button to finalize the shape. The geometry object properties must now be edited to set the correct size and position of the rectangle. To do this, Click on the rectangle R1 to select it, which also highlights it in red. Then click on the Inspect Edit Selected Geometry Object Toolbar button, and change the min and max coordinates of the rectangle so they span between 0 and 1 in the X direction, and 0 and 2 in the Y direction. Similarly, change the X min and X max properties of the second rectangle R2 to 0 and 0 0.5, and Y min and Y max to 2 and 3. To create the combined geometry, select Combine Objects from the Geometry menu. Enter the formula R1 plus R2 minus C1 in the Edit field of the Combine Geometry Objects dialog box and press OK. Grid mode Switch to grid mode by clicking on the corresponding mode toolbar button.
The default grid may be too coarse to ensure an accurate solution. Decreasing the grid size and generating a finer grid can resolve curved boundaries better. Enter 0.1 into the grid size edit field. Press the generate button to call the automatic grid generation algorithm. Equation mode. Switch to equation mode by clicking on the corresponding mode toolbar button. Equation and material coefficients are specified in equation subdomain mode. In the equation settings dialog box enter 1 for the density, and 0.05 for the viscosity. Note that FEA tool can work with any unit system, and it is up to the user to use consistent units for geometry dimensions, material, equation, and boundary coefficients. The equations must now be changed from the Cartesian to a axisymmetric cylindrical coordinate system. To do this, press the edit button next to the equation description. This will bring up the equation editing dialog box where the defined partial differential equations can be inspected and edited. Enter the expression into the equation for U edit field. Enter the expression into the equation for V-Edit field. Enter the expression into the equation for P-Edit field. Also select the P2P1 second order conforming Stokes element finite element discretization for higher accuracy, and to avoid having to reformulate the stabilization terms. Press OK to finish with the equation editing and coefficient specifications. Boundary mode. Boundary conditions are defined in boundary mode and describes how the model interacts with the external environment. Switch to boundary condition specification mode by clicking on boundary the mode toolbar button. In the boundary settings dialog box, First choose all boundaries in the left-hand side boundaries list box, and select the wall no slip boundary condition from the drop-down menu. Then select the inlet velocity boundary condition for the lower inflow boundary, and enter 1 in the edit field for the velocity v0 in the z direction. Select the top outflow boundary, and the neutral outflow stress boundary condition from the drop-down menu. Lastly, select the left side boundaries on the symmetry axis, and select the symmetry slip boundary condition from the drop-down menu. This will prevent flow in the radial direction while allowing it in the axial direction. 
Finish the boundary condition specification by clicking the OK button. Solve mode. Now that the problem has been defined, press the Solve Mode toolbar button to switch to Solve Mode, and press the Settings button to open the Solver Settings dialog box. In the Nonlinear Solver Settings section of the Solver Settings dialog box, Increase the maximum nonlinear iterations to 100, and set the nonlinear relaxation parameter to 0.8 to relax the convergence of the solver. To start the solver with the chosen settings, press the Solve button, or press OK and then the toolbar button with an equals 2 sign. Post-processing mode. After the problem has been solved FEA tool will automatically switch to post-processing mode and display the computed velocity field, which clearly shows how the flow is significantly accelerated by the pipe constriction. Cross sections of expressions such as the velocity profile can be plotted by using the point line evaluation feature from the post menu. Select point line evaluation from the post menu. Enter the evaluation coordinates 0 to 0 0.5 in steps of 0 0.05 and 2.8 in the R and Z directions. These expressions give vectors of coordinates points to evaluate. Press apply or OK to create a new figure with the cross section plot. From the cross-section plot, one can see that the velocity profile close to the outlet, at Z2.8, is starting to shift from parabolic to a more square profile indicating a higher flow rate. This also suggests that one might need to study a longer outflow section to allow for a fully developed parabolic laminar flow profile. The tutorial is now complete, and the model can be saved as a binary file, exported as a MATLABM script file, or a GUI playback file.